Hi everyone, this is Ian Trevethan. I am the Education and Outreach Manager here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. And this is our first ever Facebook live feed of From the Dome to Home. So uh, this is a weird situation for everybody. Uh, if you notice behind me throughout the museum, we're here but the museum is empty. And that means we miss you. Um, the idea behind these, these uh, live feeds is we want to interact with people at home or wherever they might be. Uh, and we want to try to bring the museum to you. And uh, just like the rest of you, this is sort of new to us. We were all thrown in this together. And um, we're hoping that this will sort of connect us in a way similar uh, to if you were able to visit the museum and come and see us. So we are learning as we go. Um, we would appreciate any uh, questions or suggestions of things that you would like to talk about um, in the comments below. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we're doing. Um, we're still here. <laughs> we're doing what we always do. So um, we're going to start today. Um, you know, I was thinking, how do you start something like this that you've never done before? Um, what do you talk about when you're in a museum all alone talking to a camera? Um, it's something that I am not particularly trained for. I'm kind of a hands-on guy. I'd much rather be working with people, with large groups of people, which of course is not going to happen right now. So as I walk through the museum, as I've been looking through the museum, there's so many possibilities that I could talk about. And it's a little bit hard to choose what do I want to talk to you people about for the first time? And so I kind of had to step back, take a breath, and think about what is my favorite fossil in this museum? Well, I don't have a good answer for that. I think just about every fossil I've got, or that we've got, uh, is in some way my favorite fossil. But when I really, really, really think about it, one of the things that draws people to be interested in paleontology, in fossils, is dinosaurs. Who doesn't like a dinosaur? The problem is we live in Kansas, and Kansas is not famous for their abundance of dinosaur fossil material. And the reason for that is during the time of the dinosaurs, between about 100 million years ago and about 70 million years ago, this area was under an inland seaway. We were covered in ocean water. So not a whole lot of uh, dinosaurs were hanging out in Kansas during that time. That's not to say that we don't find dinosaur material every once in a while in Kansas. And even more rare, sometimes we find a really, really well articulated or put together skeleton of a dinosaur. So I'm going to introduce you to a true Kansas dinosaur. So follow me over here. So this is Niobrarosaurus. Niobrarosaurus is a small armored dinosaur. We call it a notosaurid dinosaur. Notosaurs are similar to other armored dinosaurs like ankylosaurs except ankylosaurs have big clubs on their tails. Notosaurs don't, notosaurs are missing that. Um, notosaurs have really unique teeth, I'll show you some hopefully later. Um, but they still have the armor, so if you look at the way that this dinosaur is arranged, this is unique because there's so much of it, and that's exciting. Uh, but if you look on the top, you can see we've arranged the armor plating on the top part, and down below you can see it's, it's vertebrae and its ribs and its arm and leg bones. But this animal would have been covered in armor plating. So he's a little bit bigger than a sheep. Um, uh, he's, he's a very tank-like animal. Uh, we think he was probably a uh, uh, plant-eating type of dinosaur. Uh, but they have very uniquely shaped teeth. So there's some discussion about how and what they use those teeth for. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, it's what makes these animals very unique. And now I'm going to do something that I could normally not do when I have a live tour going on and a bunch of, of people here. 
I'm going to go back there and grab some of those bones. So hang on. So this is the skull of Niobrarosaurus. You can kind of see he's got a very flat head. And I, the lighter stuff is the actual material that we've recovered. And the darker stuff, I think, has been reconstructed. So this gives you an idea of how much skull material actually was present when this animal was recovered. And if you look beneath, you can kind of see there. The teeth are not very well detailed, but you can see they're sort of nubby, sort of nodule-like teeth. Uh, and we believe it was a plant eater. So this just gives you an idea of what this animal was like. So there we have a close-up of the skull of Niobrarosaurus. And it doesn't leave much to the imagination. You can kind of imagine this animal just looking at you. All right. I hand this over to our director. So if you've got any questions about our dinosaur, I'd be happy to answer them. We're checking our live feeds right now uh, and looking for any comments. So uh, if we've got any questions in real time, I'd be glad to answer them. Otherwise, um, we will certainly endeavor to answer any questions that might be asked later on during the day. So we will be doing this two times a day once in the morning at 10 a.m. and once in the evening or in the afternoon at 2 p.m., Monday through Friday. We won't be doing this during the weekend. Um, so definitely look to tune in again uh, this afternoon and we will be discussing a little bit more in depth the kinds of animals that we've got in Kansas. We're gonna talk a little bit about the seaway and we're gonna try to address the difference between dinosaurs and some of the other marine reptiles that are common from our area of Kansas. So uh, if you've got any questions between now and then, we'll look forward to seeing them and we will try our best to address them. Uh, and also if you've got suggestions for anything within the museum you would like us to discuss and talk about specifically, we're open to that and we want to kind of go where you want to take it. So let us know, reach out, talk to us, We'll be looking for you. Uh, we got a question. They were asking about do dinosaurs swim? They didn't know. If do dinosaurs swim? So yeah, that is a good question. Do dinosaurs swim? Well, the answer there is sort of. Dinosaurs are what we call terrestrial animals. Uh, generally, that means they live on the land. Now, there are some dinosaurs that we um, think might have well, we, we have evidence that they hung out in shallow water. Um, there are animals like um, Spinosaurus that we believe was a, a river uh, dinosaur that had a somewhat of a crocodilian-like posture, uh, and he was specialized for eating fish. Uh, so in that regard, yes, dinosaurs could probably swim, but could they swim in the ocean? Not likely. Uh, the Cretaceous Seaway would be a place I would avoid were I a dinosaur because I think a dinosaur would be viewed as a tasty snack. Um, so, no, dinosaurs are not renowned ocean swimmers. Uh, someone wants to know why does it not have a club tail like Ankylosaur? Why does it not have a club tail like Ankylosaur? Well, that is a very good question and it's kind of a tough question to answer. Um, but I will do my best in, in this format. Um, so one of the ways we, we like to classify and divide things up. So one of the ways that we classify certain kind of armored dinosaurs is whether that club tail is present or not. So ankylosaurids are club tailed armored dinosaurs. Notosaurids have that, uh, do not have that club tail that's absent. Now, why that happened, my best guess or best explanation is that 
they probably shared a common ancestor, something that was like a little armored dinosaur. And over time, for whatever reason, whether it be geographic barriers or you know, some sort of ecological control over that, they began to sort of look differently uh, as far as some of their features. So whether it's females, uh, you know, that became the ankylosaurs, really liked club tails, or whether, you know, having a club tail gave you a certain advantage in a certain environment, and, you know, outside of that certain environment, you didn't need a club tail, uh, then you'd start to see sort of these two armored dinosaurs start to look different from one another. Hopefully that makes sense. It's, it's a big question, and it's kind of tough to answer uh, in, a, in a short um, live cast like this. We had another question okay. about um, how do we know how many teeth it had? How do we know how many teeth it had? Well, the, the simple and short answer is we count them. <laughs> um, we, we try to compare and contrast as many specimens of a certain dinosaur as possible. So generally, um, we would go and compare this to other kinds of notosaurs in other collections at other museums and institutions. Uh, and that gives us an idea of what the standard is. It's a little tricky because dinosaurs lose and replace their teeth all through their, their lives. So there may be a little bit of variation in how many each individual has. But generally, we have that idea because we've been able to compare many similar specimens to one another. And that gives us a better idea of those kinds of answers. You have time for one more question? I have time for one more question. OK, someone wants to know if any dinosaurs could climb trees. Ooh, that's a good question. I think the answer is probably yes. And I would suggest looking into any recent papers that have been written about how certain dinosaurs learn to fly. I think there is a good uh, chunk of material that might answer some of those questions. But generally, yes, I think there were dinosaurs that could probably climb trees. Cool. All right. Any other questions? I'm still here if you want to ask questions. Uh, someone said, what was the dinosaur we're talking about again? It was called Niobrarosaurus. So oftentimes, fossil specimens are named for usually geographic um, locations or features. So in this case, this animal came out of the rock formation called the Niobrara Formation. So Niobrara, for the rock formation it came out of, Saurus, meaning reptile. So Niobrara reptile, there you have it. Any other questions? All right, well, I'm going to sign off for now. We will see you later this afternoon where we will be down to collections and we'll expand a little bit upon the difference between dinosaurs and some of the other critters you might find in this area.